So your firm, Mervac Development, uh, tries to take a collaborative approach to development. Can you tell me what that means? Absolutely. So Mervac is uh, an Australian listed development company with a 44 year uh, history. Certainly um, with our development projects, we do try and um, uh, get a collaboration across all the, the key project stakeholders, whether that's our, our, our neighbours, our consultant team, our equity partners, or the anchor tenants who we're designing uh, workspaces for. Uh, we find that unless you have a collaboration amongst all those parties, you really won't get the best out of a project. And uh, we've got um, multiple examples over the last few years where that's, uh, that's proved to, to be correct. What do you think is the best example of a project that you took a collaborative approach toward? Yeah, I, I would say at the moment, uh, Mervac's developing uh, 93,000 square metres of new uh, office buildings out at Australian Technology Park in Redfern. And very much there, we, we see a great collaboration between not only Mervac and its, its development team and our base building uh, consultant team, but also with our three equity partners, uh, as well as our anchor tenant, Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really uh, a rich collaboration. It's a collaborative effort that I certainly haven't seen uh, play out on a project before. And uh, I certainly think it'll, it'll give us the best opportunity to deliver an exceptional base building for our owners and to deliver an exceptional workplace uh, for the 10,000 new banking employees who will move into the buildings. What specifically is unique about the way that you collaborated with the, the clients and the future tenants? Sure. I, I guess traditionally as a developer you like to have your own space and design the, the base building and get that right before you, you show that and open that up to, to others, whether that's your equity partners or, or your anchor tenants. But I, I think in the case of Australian Technology Park, we've been very open uh, working with our tenant and our equity partners in uh, developing the design. And um, as I said, typically we don't do that, but I think you know, when there's a shared sense of trust and respect amongst the, the team, the, the amount of uh, critical expertise that can be brought to the table to resolve issues in a very short space of time um, mm -hmm. is amazing. It makes sense that you'd collaborate with the design team, obviously, but how about with the future tenants of the project? Do you ever get the chance to get feedback from them? In some cases, you won't know as a developer who's going to be actually using your building, but how do you try to respond to that? Sure. So in the case of Australian Technology Park, we had CBA, who's the anchor tenant, right on board uh, with us from day one when we were actually uh, bidding for the land in a very competitive process. Um, so we actually knew what the bank's brief was, we knew what their requirement was, we actually had a blank canvas um, and they were sitting at the table as we were briefing our architects as to what type of workspace, what type of base building uh, was going to suit them and, and uh, their employees. You know, the bank in this particular case is, is making a call on the next 15, 20 years uh, for their business and um, these buildings will house 10,000 people. So it's a decision they've got to get right, and it's only it makes a lot of sense if if you know the end tenant mm -hmm. is uh, is sitting at the table with the developer up front, informing the design. You mentioned fifteen to twenty years, which is a pretty good timeline for a tenant, but a building's going to last longer than that. Sure. How do you develop space that's appropriate for the tenant you intend it for, but also open to uses in the future? Yeah, that's that's a great challenge, and, and I think that's becoming more challenging. Um, in this day and age where, where tenants are certainly expecting more. Uh, so from a base building point of view, a, a lot of the old um, you know, good principles of, of design still hold true. You know, good access to daylight, where is your core located, where are the amenities, um, you know, line of sight across the floor plate. All those things are still important, but now you know, tenants are, are craving more from their workspace. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's flexibility in, in, their, in, their, in their work settings, the way their workstations are laid out, uh, the health and well-being uh, within the tenancy. So, you know, do they go home at the end of each day feeling a little bit healthier than when they arrived? Mm. Technology. So how does the base building enable not only all the base building systems to work and be connected, but also allows the tenant to overlay their technical um, overlay in, into how they want to work going forward? Yeah. And I think you know, the modern office worker is, is a lot more savvy and a lot more demanding of, of the workplace than what they were, say, 10, 15 years ago. You mentioned some things that office tenants are now demanding that they didn't used to. What are some of the new trends in how office space is used that you're having to respond to as a developer or anticipate? Because it's changing so rapidly, the amount of technology in the workplace, um, work patterns, how much people work from home or remotely. Yep. How do you respond to all this 
call it turmoil or opportunity in uh, how people are using office space differently these days. Sure. So I, I think where, as a developer, when you're having to design and develop a building without a specific end user or end tenant in mind, it's a little bit hard, it's a little bit challenging. You're actually making a call on what you think those future trends and requirements will be. But when you have the tenant sitting alongside you right up front, then you're going to get it right. Or you, you've certainly got a better chance of getting it right. But I, you know, tenants are uh, nowadays expecting more of an experience within their workplace. Uh, they're expecting, you know, great end of trip facilities. They're expecting interconnecting stairways and, and, and voids within the tenancy. They're expecting to see biophilia within the work environment. So mm. how does the, the workspace connect them back to nature? Mm. Um, and they're after more of an experience. And that experience might be specifically within the office or it might be in the cafes and public spaces at the base of the building. Um, it might also be the technology that enables them to work somewhere within the building, somewhere in the cafe downstairs or even remotely from home or across the world. So mm. certainly the, the modern day workplace is, is putting a whole lot more uh, challenges uh, onto the base building. How can the workplace connect back to nature? It seems like a tall order for anyone who's stepped into a typically antiseptic office environment. Sure. So I guess there's um, you know the use of, of plants in the workspace. So it, it, in Mervac's uh, headquarters tenancy within the EY centre building, we actually have at least one plant for every employee. So there's a lot of green plants on display. Uh, also at the EY centre, we have uh, a lot of natural timber on display. So whether that's in the cladding materials or within the blinds of the facade system. So again, it's, it's just this warm, subtle connection with nature, which research has shown uh, does benefit employees in their day-to-day -day work, workplace experience. Mm -hmm. Do you find that as a developer there's more return on your investment to think th to take into consideration these kinds of uh, connections to nature and things like that? Sure, look, a as a developer you, you, you always want to make sure that the building you provide is going to be attractive to tenants. So, you know, what are the things that are going to, that are going to be attractive to tenants? Because the more attractive the building is, the less likely it's going to be that it's going to be vacant and uh, we're going to maximise our return at the back of that. So certainly we, we've got to be mindful of, of all these things. And as I said before, the ability to work with the tenant up front to make sure we're tailoring our base buildings to suit the end user is always the best outcome. It makes sense. Where we don't and when we're developing you know, on a speculative basis, then we do run the risk of providing a building that may not be relevant to the future needs of mm -hmm. um, you know, the modern day workforce. Let's talk more about the EY Centre, which your offices are in and the project yep. that, that you developed. Um, it's a pretty striking skyscraper um, where it meets the ground kind of elegantly. It's on a, a sandstone podium and it responds to the site and re references a lot about the history of the site and about Sydney. Um, and as you mentioned, it uses wood and other natural materials in a way that the skyscraper tends not to. Sure. Um, tell me a little bit more about how that project came together and what you think um, how it serves as an example potentially for other projects. Yeah, so we, back in 2011, we commissioned six leading uh, Australian-based architects to compete in a design excellence competition. And at the end of that process, we had very, six very different designs. And uh, the design that was most striking and, and really did stand out from its peers was the design by FJMT. And I guess what, what caught our eye was a, a very elegant sculptural form of the building. Um, the building's use of, of natural timber in its facade. And mind you, we were quite concerned at that time about the, the longevity and maintenance issues associated with timber, but we were able mm. to work through uh, with FJMT to, to satisfy those concerns. Mm. But it was certainly a design that, that took into consideration all the constraints and opportunities of the site. I think the floor plate configuration maximised the views to the harbour. Uh, we had to deal with a, a major electrical easement that um, that uh, cut across the site. Hmm. And so the FJMT core location, the way they configured the floor plates, uh, was, was very appealing to us. And uh, it was almost a no-brainer that we selected the FJMT scheme to, to hmm. take forward. Mm -hmm. So there's about 4,000 people working in the EY Centre now. Do you get any feedback from them outside of your own office about all these aspects of the workplace that, that you've said are so unique here? Um, do people actually notice? Look, I, I think so. Um, you know, if we if we talk to other tenants who are who are working within the building, uh, they're very proud of the building. They like to bring their their visitors, their guests, their peers into the workplace. I think it's it's a good reflection of of 
their company brands, uh, which I think is, is very important for modern day tenants. You know, they, they just don't want a workspace where their employees can turn up and do a day's work. The workplace now has to be a reflection of, of the, the company's culture or their emerging culture. And um, I think most modern businesses uh, are very careful that the, the image they promote out in the market has to be backed up uh, in the workspace that uh, they expect their employees to, to work in every day.